Good afternoon, and welcome. On the occasions I've needed today's prop, I've always had the financial backing to rent. Today I thought I'd try building it using dollar store materials, so here's my version of a low-budget police belt. Materials for this prop include black duct tape, long strips of cardboard, brass fasteners, scissors, eight hand tool holders, tape, an X-Acto blade, stapler, black spray paint, and aluminum tape. First, cut the cardboard to a suitable width for a belt. Police belts are generally two inches in width. Use the black duct tape to cover the entire length of the belt. You can tape two pieces of cardboard together for additional length. Once you've finished, roll the entire belt up so the cardboard will have a natural curve to it. For the belt buckle, I need another piece of cardboard with a greater width than the belt. Cut this piece into a rectangle, about 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Cut two squares out of the rectangle following this template. Cover the whole buckle in aluminum tape, or as an alternative, you can spray paint it silver. Once you've finished the buckle, insert the belt through one side and fold it back on itself so one side of the buckle is now encased by the belt. Secure the belt to the buckle by wrapping it in duct tape. To prep the tool holders, you'll need to break off the metal holders. Always be safe when handling spray paint, use goggles and masks at all times. Dollar store tool holders often come in different colors, so they'll need a couple coats of black. This part of the demo relies greatly on your own creativity. I went online and found common pouches on a police belt, then cut my pouches to a similar shape. This holder is going to be a gun holster, so I need most of the length. I use the X-Acto blade and scissors to cut a hole for the gun to slide into. I use the brass fasteners as accents, or to hold the pouches together. For the mace holder, I want a narrower pouch, so I cut the holder in half, rip the lining off one half, and attach it to the other. One thing to keep in mind is that every pouch must somehow incorporate a belt loop to slide onto the belt itself. Sometimes I'm able to create belt loops by folding the holders. Other times I have to create one using the X-Acto blade. For the spare magazine pouch, make two of the mace holders and attach them to another pouch using the stapler. Use the fasteners to accent. For the cuff case, I fold a single holder into thirds, stick in a couple fasteners, and cut an incision for the cuffs. For the radio holder, I simply cut a slit all the way across the pouch. It may not fit a real radio, but you can find a black box the right size to fit inside. For the key holder, I use the wider end of the pouch, add in a couple brass clips for accents, and insert a safety pin to hold the keys. Now it's time to slide all the pouches onto the belt. And there's your low-budget police belt. The key to making this prop look effective is in the accessories. I use an airsoft Beretta, and I can generally find a passable pair of handcuffs in a walkie in most toy stores. Thanks for joining me on the Prop Master's Handbook. See you next time.